Ever tried calling someone after a bad storm rolls through? Yeah. And your phone's just dot dead. Yeah. It's a helpless feeling. It is. You really realize how much you depend on having a signal. And that's exactly what this article from Live Now, Not a Fox, published just the other day, October 10th, dives into. It's about how people in Florida dealt with those exact scenarios during Hurricane Milton. Right. A major hurricane. Tons of damage. Exactly. But the really interesting part is how this new satellite technology is changing things. Hmm. You know, giving people options they didn't have before. It's a game changer for sure. And the article highlights the shift really well. I mean, we've all seen the headlines. Hurricane Milton knocked out cell service for AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, you name it. It's almost like a given at this point. Every time there's a natural disaster, bam, communication goes dark. Why is that? Why are these networks so vulnerable? Well, think about the infrastructure. Hurricanes, earthquakes, they don't discriminate. Cell towers, they take a beating, and when those towers go down, so does your connection. Which is where this whole satellite thing comes in, right? The article mentioned that more cell phones can now send messages through satellites. Yeah, and it's a pretty big deal. Instead of relying on those towers on the ground, your phone's beaming a signal hundreds of miles overhead straight to a satellite. Wow, so you're bypassing all that vulnerable infrastructure. Exactly. Satellites give you broader reach. They're unaffected by what's happening down here. But there's always a but, isn't there? There's got to be a catch. It's distance. You're sending signals much farther, which means potential lags, lower bandwidth. So probably not streaming Netflix during a hurricane. Probably not the best time for that, no. But for essential communication, emergency calls, texts, it's huge. It could be the difference between life or death. That's what struck me, too. And the article goes into how to use this on iPhones, yeah. specifically the iPhone 14 and later models. Yeah. Seems like Apple's going all in on this. They've integrated it right into their operating system. And made it pretty user-friendly. I was reading through the steps. You go to the control center, a few taps, and boom, you're connecting to a satellite. They even have a demo mode so you can practice. Which is actually smart. You don't want to be figuring this out in the middle of an emergency for the first time. Exactly. And it's free for the first two years. But it makes you wonder, after that, will be like another monthly fee? Satellite data plan. Could be. The pricing model for this is still developing. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. And what about us Android users? What about us? Does Google have something similar? The article mentioned it, but it's not as widely available. Figures. So it's only for the newest, most expensive phones. Seems like it. In the US, only the Google Pixel 9 series has this emergency SOS via satellite. Ah, so if you've got an older phone or you're outside the US, you might be out of luck for now. It seems that way, at least for the moment. But the process sounds similar. You call 911, And if that fails, your phone gives you the option to try Satellite SOS. What I find interesting is that both Apple and Google are focusing on the safety and emergency aspect first. It's not about replacing your data plan just yet. It's about that lifeline in a crisis. Right, when you really need it most. But the article also touched on something even bigger, this partnership between T-Mobile and Starlink. Now that's next level stuff. Yeah, we've been talking about phones connecting directly to satellites, but this is something else entirely. Because this isn't just about individual phones anymore. Starlink is creating a whole network, a mesh network in space with their satellites. A mesh network in space. Okay, now you're just messing with me. How does that even... It's real and it's already working. The article mentioned people in hurricane-affected areas using this T-Mobile Starlink system to text when cell service was down. No way. And I remember seeing Elon Musk tweeting about it, how they were speeding up the rollout because of the hurricane. That's right, and that new users can even activate Starlink for free right now. Free? Yeah. Wow. And apparently it's not just T-Mobile, it's going to work with other carriers too eventually. That's what Musk has indicated, yes. It's incredible. This technology could be a game changer, especially for remote places or disaster-prone areas. It could bridge the digital divide in ways we haven't seen before. So instead of relying on cell towers, we could have this network of satellites blanketing the planet. Exactly. Providing internet access, communication, regardless of your location, sounds futuristic, but it's closer than we think. It does feel futuristic. But like with any new tech, especially something this powerful, there are going to be challenges. Of course, there always are. How do we ensure access for everyone? I mean, right now, it seems like you need the latest smartphone or the money to buy Starlink equipment. What about communities who can't afford that? 
That's a critical question. And there's the issue of regulation. How do we ensure responsible use of this technology, especially when you're talking about data, privacy, security, with signals traveling through space? And what about misuse? Could this be used for surveillance? Yeah. To limit free speech? These are things we have to consider as this tech becomes more widespread. Absolutely. It's not just about government oversight either. It's about us as individuals thinking about the implications, advocating for responsible development. So like any powerful tool, yeah. it's not inherently good or bad. It's how we choose to use it that matters. Exactly. And I think that's something the article did a good job of highlighting. Yes, it's about this amazing technology, but it's also about people, about our resilience, our ability to adapt, to connect, even when things fall apart. Even when the world feels like it's going offline. That's right. It really highlights how important this stuff is, how it connects us, especially during tough times. Exactly. It's easy to get lost in the technical jargon, but at the end of the day, it's about people staying connected when they need it most. And the article really drives that point home, how this technology helped real people in Florida during a real crisis. It got me thinking, though, what about other situations where having a reliable connection could be a game changer? Oh, absolutely. Think about remote areas, maybe search and rescue operations, or even just traveling to places with spotty cell service. Satellite communication could be huge in those situations. It's like we were talking about before, bridging that digital divide. Yeah. But how would that actually work? I mean, could you give us a bit more about how this tech could bring internet access to places that don't have it? Sure. Imagine a world where instead of being limited by cell towers, you could get high-speed internet beamed down from space. That's the promise of satellite internet. It could connect even the most remote corners of the world, completely changing things like education, healthcare, even economic opportunities. Wow. You could have kids in remote villages accessing the same educational resources as kids in big cities. Exactly. And doctors could provide remote consultations. Specialists could weigh in on cases from anywhere. The possibilities are pretty incredible when you think about it. It's like the whole world opens up, right? Yeah. Not limited by physical infrastructure anymore. Yeah. Just like in the article, people using Starlink during the hurricane, but on a much bigger scale. Exactly. And it's not just about access either. It's about the quality of that access. Satellite Internet has the potential to deliver really fast speeds, which is a game changer for areas stuck with slow, unreliable connections. It's one thing to have a connection. It's another thing entirely to have a connection that lets you do what you need to do. So we're not just talking about checking your email, we're talking about streaming, downloading, all of it. Precisely. It could be transformative for these communities. But of course, as with any big technological leap, there are hurdles. Right. Like we talked about before, cost is a big one. How do we make sure that this technology is accessible to everyone, not just those who can afford it? It's a crucial question, and there's no easy answer. It'll take collaboration between governments, private companies, communities, figuring out things like subsidies, infrastructure investments. And even then, there's the technical side of things. Yeah, we've been talking about phones connecting to satellites and this Starlink system, this mesh network. Could you break that down a little bit more? What does that even mean, a mesh network in space? Sure. Picture a bunch of interconnected routers, except they're floating in space. That's essentially what Starlink is doing. Instead of relying on one satellite to beam data back and forth, they're using thousands of smaller satellites that talk to each other, creating a more stable and resilient network. So like a giant web of connectivity, but in space. Exactly. And this mesh network has some real advantages over those older satellite systems. Lower latency, which means faster speeds, higher bandwidth so you can do more at once, and wider coverage. It really does feel like we're looking at the future of global communication. But, and I think this is important to remember, anytime you have powerful technology, you have the potential for misuse. We talked about data privacy and security, but what else should we be thinking about? Data security is huge, absolutely. Right. When our information is traveling through space, we need to make sure it's protected, that there are strong encryption protocols in place to prevent unauthorized access. It's not something we can take lightly. And what about governments using this technology for surveillance or even to censor information to control what people can access? It's not outside the realm of possibility. You're right. It's something to be aware of. And it's why it's so crucial to have those open discussions to establish ethical guidelines and international agreements for the use of this technology. We can't just assume it will be used for good. It's like we're entering this uncharted territory. We have this incredible tool this ability to connect the world in ways we never thought possible, but we need to be smart about how we use it. 
Exactly. It's a shared responsibility. We all have a part to play in shaping how this technology is used. It's a lot to consider. But before we go too far down that road, I think it's important to remember what got us talking about all of this in the first place. You're right. It all started with that article with Hurricane Milton and how satellite technology helped people stay connected during that crisis. Exactly. It's a good reminder that technology, even when it feels futuristic, can have a real human impact. It can help us during emergencies. It can connect us. It can even help us rebuild. And as this technology keeps evolving, who knows what it will be capable of? Mm. It really makes you think, where does this all go from here? I mean, we've talked about the impact on remote areas, but what about the bigger picture? A future where everyone's connected no matter where they are. What could that look like? It's not just about having the internet everywhere. It's about what that enables. Think about it. Geographical boundaries become less relevant. Education, healthcare, business, everything changes. It's exciting and a little bit mind-blowing at the same time. The article touched on telemedicine, how it could be revolutionary. Could you unpack that a bit? How could satellite communication change healthcare, especially for people in remote areas? Imagine a specialist in, say, New York City being able to consult with a patient hundreds, even thousands of miles away in real time with a high quality video connection. Or think about doctors conducting virtual rounds in hospitals across the globe, offering their expertise without having to travel. Wow. That could be life-changing for those patients. And like you said, it goes beyond healthcare. What about education? It could be huge for students in underserved communities. Absolutely. Imagine students in a remote village having access to the same online resources, the same educational platforms as students in any major city. Distance learning would be completely different. Quality education wouldn't be limited by where you live. It's like suddenly everyone has a chance to reach their full potential, regardless of their circumstance. Exactly. And think about the potential for global collaboration. Scientists from different countries working together on research projects in real time, sharing data, collaborating as if they were in the same room. It's incredible. It's like we're talking about connecting not just individuals, but connecting the entire world on a whole new level. Exactly. And that kind of connection has the power to change things for the better. More understanding, more collaboration, even more empathy between different cultures. It's a powerful idea. It is. But like we've been discussing, it's not all sunshine and roses. Right. We have to be aware of the potential downsides, the challenges. We talked about access, data security. But what else stands in the way of making this vision of a connected future a reality? One of the biggest things is international cooperation. As satellite communication becomes more important to how we live, we need to have clear global agreements. Talk about everything from who gets to use which part of the radio spectrum to responsible use of space itself. We can't have countries fighting over the airwaves, so to speak. Right, because this technology it has the potential to impact everyone on the planet. It's yeah. bigger than just one country or one company. Exactly, and we need to treat it that way. We need to make sure it benefits all of humanity, not just a select few. It feels like we're on the edge of something brand new, something revolutionary, like those early days of the internet, but on a much larger scale. It's an incredibly exciting time to be thinking about these things. And as we've talked about, it's not just about the technology itself, it's about what we choose to do with it. Well said. It's about making sure we're using this technology to build a better future, a more connected future for everyone. A future where everyone has the opportunity to thrive. That's a great place to leave it. Thank you so much for joining us today for this deep dive into the world of satellite technology and its impact on the future of communication. We hope you found it informative, thought-provoking, and maybe even a little bit inspiring. Until next time.